Great. So uh, thanks uh, to the remote folks for for uh, bearing with that. We are back in the classroom, and unfortunately, with with about ten or fifteen minutes less here. So what we're going to do is quickly go through some material in any logic on port storage delay. So we have little water. Um. um Um, uh, okay, that's, that's fine. Um, okay, so we're gonna, we're going to, um, it's kind of a, a, a dumb sort of, uh, yeah, I, I wish I had a better, better example of this. Um, so give, give me just a thought. So, um, uh, Um, uh, uh, so people, um, people being, sir, uh, being, uh, 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 served, something like that. Okay. That's a bit better. People being served. Good. Um, okay. So we're going to have per Babs's comment, a flow out, and this is going to be, um, um, service completion. And what makes it a first order delay is what, Babs? That this flow out does what? It depends linearly on this. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna examine this in two different ways, right? We're going to have a parameter called mean time um, under service. Okay, um, and uh, in this case, the formula for service completion will be what? You tell me. What will it be? What will the formula here be? First of all, what will it depend on? On what will this, what will this value for this flow depend? People being toast. Okay, people, uh, people being served is one. And what's the other one? Meantime. In the meantime, exactly. So we're going to try again. Now, in system dynamics, we distinguish visually between um, you know, on what we depend. There's a higher level description of a model, a system structure diagram, which actually doesn't have formulas, formulae, and what it has instead is dependencies. And and um, that's intermediate and level of description between a stock and flow diagram, fully quantified on the one hand, and a causal loop. In between them is kind of where we capture the stock flow structure, but we don't yet have formulas. Turns out there's some deep mathematics here that my lab studies um, involving uh, uh, category theory and 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 really uh, reasoning about the relationships of these different levels to each other. Uh, and 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 it, it bears noting that there's a lot of math here beyond just the formula. But the formula for this for this outflow, given that it depends on mean time under service and people be, being served. What is that formula? And it has to be dimensionally correct. So what is it going to be? If mean time being under service is days, it accords with the time unit of the model, what's this formula going to be? Yes, Ethan. One over mean time under service times people being served. Good. Yeah. Yeah. We could think of it that way. One divided by mean time under service. That one divided by that is is going to be this hazard rate, this chance for unit time of bleeding, right? Um, or we could take the bit of shorthand and, and then that times people for being served. That would be kind of a formulation a bit like alpha times x. Alternatively, we could just make it people being served divided by the mean time under service. Are we okay with that? No, I, I want to motivate this. Uh, so I'm going to put the formula here. I want to motivate it a bit more in a second. But the formula for this is people being served. Note that I'm putting a formula that has to be consistent with these dependencies divided by the mean time under service. Okay. And you can do 
autocomplete with control space on a PC and uh, command. No, it was option. No. Option space option. on a Mac. Directed by weight. Okay. <laughs> yes, we need weight. We need weight in the room. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, we'll yell loud enough. <laughs> here. Okay. And let's make people being served uh, a thousand here. Okay. A, th a thousand. That stands for a thousand people. Okay. The unit of that stock is one person. The dimension is, is people. Um, the unit is one one person. It means one. Okay. Um, okay. So if we see this and if we run this, what will we see for the number of people being served? Tell me. What will we see? Oh, no, we should give a, a initial value, a mean time under service, give a default value, mm -hmm. make it 10 days. So 10.0. Hmm? It's a value, it just said 10.0, uh, but we know it's days because the time unit of the model is good. Okay. Is the dimension of this correct? Is the dimension of this outflow? In the first order of delay, is this a correct dimension? Remember, I said the stock has a certain dimension. Let's get people. The outflows and inflows to the stock all have to be of that dimension divided by what? Times with T. Time. Yeah. Um, is this a correct, dimensionally correct? Yes, it is. Yeah. So, so people being served as dimension people, mean time under service is dimension time. Then this is people per unit time. The rate of flow is some people per unit time. 10 would mean what here? 10 people per day. The value of the flow would be people per day, 10 people per day. We go with that? The value of the flow are 1,000. It'll be a thousand people per day. That's that's important. Are we good with this? Okay. So if I were to run it, what is the logical consequence of this? What's the what happens over time if I were to run this? What's going to happen? Yes, Jeff. Negative exponential, so it's going to decrease. Yeah, uh, it's, a, it's a negative exponential. So so I could go to my projects and I could run my baseline case here, my sort of default case. And I would see it. Oh, oh, you know what I did? Look at that. There's a there's a problem there. Um, because I know that because there's a cloud, and I think this is not correctly connected. Aha. What's the problem? How do I know there's a problem? Glancing at this, I I could see immediately there's a problem. There's a no green circle. There's no green circle. Yeah. Green is the color. And any logic is the game. There we go. So now it's a green circle. Otherwise, those look like they're connected, but they're not logically connected. Are we good with that idea? Okay. So so I could see that when I ran it because there was a cloud there, and I said, that doesn't look right. That doesn't look right. So hopefully me doing this prevents you from having that silly error. You know, I'm not saying you're silly. I'm just saying that's a silly any logic thing, how easily that can happen. And now you see a little bit how to avoid that. So if we run this, what will we see here? Jeff said earlier, it's an exponential decrease, right? Mm -hmm. Here we go. Plot it out. It starts at, at what? What does it start at? A thousand and it decreases. Are we good with this? And it decreases. And if we keep on running, it'll be going towards what? Zero. Zero. Yeah. Okay. This is a first order delay. Mm -hmm. um, I could alternatively specify this. Instead of having mean time under service, I could have it as probability of leaving per day. And what would that value be? If the mean time under service is. 10 here, what would, I phrase this as X divided by mu here, right? This, this outflow. So if I want to phrase it as 
Instead, as in terms of chance per day someone is leaving, what would that chance per day be? What value? Yes, can it be one over 10? One over 10. Remember this whole idea? The, the rate is uh, one over mean time um, uh, in the stock, or, or the mean time in the stock is one over the rate of leaving? Hmm? So we could have phrased this as as some probability per unit time times this people being served. I hope you could see that numerically, it's the same thing. It's just phrasing it in somewhat different ways, but uh, the mathematics has them you know, producing the same results, okay? Okay, now, so those are two ways of framing it. Now I want to, however, do something a little bit different. I wanna have an inflow here. And this is, I will call it new people, um, uh, uh, for service, um, people signing up for service. Okay. Um, and I am going to have this be a value right now, which is. 10. Okay, 10. What does that 10 mean? So what does it mean? What, is, what does 10 mean? It means 10 people per day. It's the value of a flow. The flow has dimension, what? People per day or people per time, per time. We, I, I would accept if you said people per day, I'd accept that, but but per day technically is the unit. Time is the dimension. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so that means 10 people per day. So if I ran this now, what would I see? And how would it be different from what I just wrote? Mm -hmm. What will I see? So what did I see before? Jeff said it. What did I what did I see before? I saw an exponentially decreasing curve. Do you remember that? going towards zero. What would I see now? Okay, it's going to be an equilibrium. Will it immediately get into equilibrium? Still be an exponential decrease, but it will, you know, asymptotically approach 10 instead of zero. Okay, okay. It'll exponentially approach what will be 10? I, I agree at a certain level, it'll, it, it will exponentially approach 10, but what is it? So, okay, so so let's let's play it out. Good. So so if the value of the stock is ten, hmm, what would the value of the outflow be? Remember the formula for the outflow ten. is ten divided by what? Ten. Ten, by ten, which is what? One, is the stock going to be in equilibrium? There are 10 people per day coming in and one people per day leaving. Is it going to be in equilibrium? No. no. It would be an equilibrium of at something equal 10. What would that thing be that has to equal 10 for it to be in equilibrium? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, the outflow needs to equal the inflow. In that case, it would be an equilibrium. So Jack's right. Then it's going towards something equal to 10, but the thing is not the stock. What would the value of the stock have to be to make the outflow 10? 100. 100. Why 100? Divided by 10. Yeah, 100 divided by 10 is 10, which is the value of the inflow. At, at the stock equaling 100, the outflow will be what? 10. 10. And the inflow is 10. 10, and so it will be in balance. Do you get that? Okay, so you're going to tell me what is, if I simulate this, what's it going to look like? What's going to happen? So Jeff's right in broad terms that it'll start at a thousand. And what will happen? Yes, Ken. The stock will do an exponential decay until it reaches a hundred and then flat, flat out and service will 
recharge. Excellent. Do an exponential decay until it reaches 100. And it will flatten out there because what? Inflow equals outflow, right? So it started at 1,000. And it's coming down. And it kind of looks, you might be forgiven for thinking, hey, it's the same thing as before. But now it's going to 100. Why, why is it going to 100 again? Why is it going to 100? Notice it's, it's like really zoomed in. Why is it going to 100? Because that's when it's in balance. This has a what feedback associated with it? Balancing feedback. Where's the balancing feedback? I didn't want to pause, but, but where, where is the balancing feedback? It is there. In fact, it's staring you in the face. Where is it? Yes, okay. The stock? Yeah, it involves the stock. So the link from the stock to service completion, the link from this to the flow, is it a plus link or a minus link? So, so thinking a bit as if we're causal diagram, you know, does uh, there's a link, right? You see this link? You see this here link? Um, from people being served to service completion, is that a plus or a minus link? So as people being served goes up, does service completion go up or down compared to the value? It otherwise would have had all the same thing equal. Oh, well. uh, up. Yeah, if you. If you double the number of people being served, the rate of the outflow will be interest. You double, right? You have ten times as many people being served. It's on to be ten times about the outflow. That's why it's it's a linear dependency, right? If X were, if we consider what alpha X is, and now I were to say, I have what is alpha? You know, if that's about the outflow, and now I say I have 10 times as many people, I'll put up 10x. Well, the value of the outflow will be 10 times larger. Hmm? Makes sense? Okay, now. So, so it depends linearly uh, on that. So that's a plus link. What is this link going back? As the service completion goes up, does it increase as, as a service condition? The flow out goes up. The flow out goes up. The value of the stock goes up or down compared to the value it otherwise would have had. Other than down. So there's a plus link here from the stock to the flow and a what link back from the flow to the stock? Minus. Minus. And, you know, it's not telling with the next hour and whatever back into it, but. But it, it's a minus one. That's the negative feedback loop. And negative feedback loops are what? Bad. Balancing. Uh -huh. And let's let's show that balancing some more if we could. Okay. Um so so here we go. We're looking at the value of this, okay, the value of the stock. Um, and I can go and I can change the value of the stock. Right, I can change it to be. Well, you tell me. I could change it to be a thousand again. What will happen? What if I change it to be a thousand again? What will happen? Same darn thing. Yeah, same darn thing. It'll come back. Right. Uh, good. If if I change it to be two hundred, what would happen? Well, same basic thing. It'll just be coming down from a smaller value. Right. So let's run it out. And there it is, went up to 200, and then it's coming down. And it's coming down to a value of what? 100, because it's at 100 that it's what? In b b b balance. Thank you. Um, how do I change this to 50? 50. Will it go down much more? It'll go up. Why will it go up? Let's trace the reason. I think you understand with this was a thousand. Why did it go down when it was a thousand? Why did it go down exponentially? Why did it go up? You tell me. What's the story? Outflow is greater than outflow is greater than the inflow. So it, out, then the, the outflow is greater than the inflow. So it goes down until the outflow equals the inflow. 
if I set it to be 50, if I start at 50 here, what will it do? What, what, how will the inflow compare to the outflow? If it's 50, how many people are coming in per day? 10. 10. And if the stock is a value 50, how many people are leaving per day? But why five? Because the outflow is 50 divided by 10, mean time, right? The inflow will be bigger than the outflow. So will the stock go, if the inflow is bigger than the outflow, will the stock be going up or down? Right? Up. Oh. up. Uh -huh. It'll be going up, and it'll be going up until what? Until the, yeah, until 100, but until the inflow goes to the outflow. Hmm? And it'll be going, so can we see that? Can we see it? I'm not seeing a riot of people saying no, so I'm going to do it if that's okay. Don't mind if I do. Okay, you see, you see what happened? Did you see what happened? I went down to 50. You may have missed some of the action, but now it's coming up to 100. Why is it coming up to 100? Why is it going up? Because the y inflow is greater than the outflow, right? So it's like at 50, the outflow is 5, right? 50 divided by 10, the inflow is 10. And so the stock was going up, but it will only go up to 100 because at the 100, the what equals what? Thank you. Do you grok it? You, you getting a sense of this? Why it seeks balance? It seeks balance because it, it yearns to have outflow equal inflow, right? To be in balance. Are we okay with that? Okay, now. Now, time, time plan was that I would now leave you in another phase of first order delays as target follower. And we have 10 to 15 minutes left to pursue that. But guess what? We have a fire drill, 10 to 15 minute fire drill. So you didn't get to see this. This, but but I, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you we already saw two close cousins. I mean two things that are really the same, two ways of presenting the same information as stock divided by mean time, hmm? or as stock times the probability per day is leaving. <laughs> probability of leaving like head zero number one. Um. And we saw those, could, we could phrase it that way. But there's another way to, there's another way to show that, that I yearn to show you, just as much as that stock yearns to make out clothes. And what is that way? It's a target follower, where we have target value, ladies and gentlemen, for the stock. And the stock tries to follow this target adjusting a single flow in or out as needed to go either way. So if the target is above the value of the stock, the flow will be what direction? I to think one stock, I'll draw it out here, this time for this side of the room. So here's our, here's our stock. For the single flow, either in or out, can be positive or negative. And there'll be a target, target. And the value of this will be x. And the value of this flow will be target, take the gap between that and x. This is bigger than x. If target is bigger than x, x and target minus x will be what? Positive. Positive. If target is less than x, it will be, and we'll divide it by some delay. Some delay. Okay, which is another called delay. Okay, so if the, if the target is bigger than the stock, will we get a net inflow or outflow? Inflow, right? Well, it will be bigger than zero, right? And the stock will be going, if the, this is the only flow associated with the stock. So will the value of the stock be going up or down? Phrased as an inflow. If target is less than the value of the stock, it's smaller than it, this value will be negative. 
and it will be drawing drawing value out of here. I'll show you the pencil on it. Mm -hmm. And this dot will want to follow the target. It'll be yearning to follow the target. And we can losslessly convert between this representation and this one. Make delay be mu. What is mu? What was mu? Just the mean time you spend in the sum. So you make delay be mu. And the question is, what is target? Maybe someone can answer it now so I don't have to give it as a take home answer. What, what's the value of target? What's the what's the value? So we talked earlier about how a first order delay yearns to make y equal to what? Inflow equals, equals outflow, right? That's when it's in balance. But that's a first order delay. What is the value of this stock? What's the value of the stock at which it's in balance? Mu times inflow. Mu times inflow. Mm -hmm. So so target is mu. Okay, but so target has to be such that we we are going to have over there will be times inflow. So if you had a, a value of, of inflow, like 10 people per day, and we had some mean amount of time that they were there, maybe it's 10 days, right? So maybe the inflow is 10. Your average amount of time in the stock maybe is 10. Stock wants to go to what level? What's the target? 100, right? That's what it wanted to go to. You remember that? Remember that? Why did it want to go? Why did it want to go to 100? Because at 100, what equals what? In flow, it goes out. You, you get it? So you can convert losslessly, seamlessly, between this representation where you have some inflow and you have some mean time, and this one here. It just wants to go to the target. This one is kind of focused on the on the stock value of the stock. You're looking at the difference between the target and the value of the stock, and you're adjusting the flow uh, accordingly. Here, it's kind of focused on the flows. It wants the outflow to equal the inflow, and it adjusts the value of the stock as needed to make that happen. We kind of so here this this first bracing it adjusts the stock to make outflow equal inflow. This one it adjusts the flow to make the target of the stock equal to the value of the stock. Mm -hmm. I'll see if I can give you some slides on this so you can see it. We'll talk about it uh, a little bit more, but you'll see both of these likely uh, in the, the course coming up. So these are two, three different ways, if it were, as it were, two of them are just close cousins. They're mathematically identical. This is also mathematically identical, but it's kind of a different way of thinking about it. One is stock centric, this one here with target. One is low centric okay first order delays are everywhere i would say in many models 80 percent of the stocks in the flows are basically first order delays. although often you'll have more than one flow out etc but basically it's that and you can just read off what's the mean time or what's the chance for you time that we do we okay um this stuff it's highly example. The final example of several things. Very long. Fair one. Okay. So if, if you're not comfortable with this, no change. Come talk with me. Um, I want you to grok it. I want you to feel it in your viscerally understand. Okay. Um, and if 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 you're finding it hard, it's a great thing to chat with. Okay. I'll, always delighted to talk about this. We good with this? I'll post this model. Okay. Thank you for bearing with the foreshortened time. And I will you will see the you'll see the assignment posted here. Thank you for your patience.